Welcome home. This is Father Tim Donovan and Pam Hurwitz leading us to a place where faith and family meet. This is our very first episode of Home, and we're so excited to launch this new podcast to better serve your families and to give you an opportunity to to have modeled for you what it looks like to bring faith and family together in the context of your home. My name is Father Tim Donovan. I'm the parochial vicar at St. Bonaventure in Huntington Beach, a beautiful parish here. Just finished my first year serving here, and I can't believe how fast that's gone. And just my love for the family has so much grown over these years of being um, a seminarian and now as a priest and being at this awesome parish and working with these awesome families here. And I'm so excited to have my co-host here with me, Pam Hurwitz, a herald of the family, <laughs> a warrior for the family values and and just a great love for that. And, and Pam and I go way back. She was my youth minister in high school, and I'm so excited to have this opportunity to serve with her and to continue to minister to families with her. I just like to welcome Pam. Um, thank you. I am thrilled to be a part of this, and I do. I actually feel like I'm waking up in in, in, in the midst of one of my dreams, and they're actually happening. Amen. So, um, I a little bit about me is that I was a youth minister for um, a number of years, ten years, at one of our parishes, and and then I worked um, for our diocesan team with all the youth um, ministers and young adults. And in the midst of that, I was raising my own two children. I have a daughter who's 27, and I have a son who's 24 now. And I kind of started realizing that I couldn't find many resources for myself about how to talk to my kids about their own faith and um, how to bring um, faith into my home. And I went on a mission, and I continue to be on a mission to provide those type of resources. So I feel like I spend a lot of time now, I probably speak three to four times a week in parishes, giving the talks that I needed to hear. And I am really, really excited to be a part of this project because I, it's something that I could have used in, in my home. And so I, um, I'm also honored to be in your homes because um, I think that's a big deal. Mm. Um, we are in people's homes right now, Tim. Okay, <laughs> people are hearing us. And they're welcoming us into their homes. <laughs> yes, into your homes. Oh, okay. And many times when people come over to my home, I'm like, I don't know if I can let you in until it's all cleaned up and I'm picked up and put away. And I, and I never want that this podcast to feel like that. Like if you um, are feeling like, man, I, I I can't, I don't even know if I can listen to a, a podcast about parenting right now because I am not feeling good about where we're at or whatever. I just want you to know that the desire of Tim and I is to come right in the midst of your chaos and, and minister to you and give you hope. Wherever you're at, I hope this podcast, I hope you never, ever feel any sense of... Um, of needing to clean up to listen to this somehow. <laughs> Amen. I yeah. think my my life as a priest and my life as a seminarian, even as a son, has just so illumined the importance of family and so illumined the need of it in our world today. I remember even when I was a youth minister, I became a youth minister after Pam had left San Antonio, and that totally changed my life and actually paved the way to me becoming a priest and, and just working with so many young people and seeing the need the need to renew faith in our families because because what happens in our in our home ultimately is what sticks in our hearts. What happens in our home is ultimately what we're going to continue to practice as families in the future. And there's such a pivotal time, I think, in our world right now, such a pivotal time to rebuild up these basic building blocks of the church, which is the family, to reclaim our homes as the domestic church, to be a place that, um, you know, from the very beginning of the baptism where whoever's been baptized is is that claiming that right to to raise your children in the faith. And and so we want to support you in that. We want to be people who come alongside you, as Pam said, and and to help give you that vocabulary and also to encourage you to know that we're here for you as well. And that we'll help to answer your questions and help to to encourage you along the journey and, and to be modeled by other families who are who are in the trenches with you and who are wanting the same thing as you want for your children. And I feel um, like I also just want to say as we begin that we sort of have um, not really done, I think, the best job as a church um, supporting parents maybe in the last, you know, 20 years um, because we were, we were kind of counting on the religious education programs that we had in place at schools and 
um, in parishes to sort of do that, you know. And, and, and the family used to, the hub of um, family life at one time was a church. And now with the sports and, 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 and us being pulled in a million different directions as families, I think more and more we have to uh, really talk about and, 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 and give families, like I said, language and practices to do really in their own homes. Um, and yeah. And so we hope this podcast uh, will be a place for you for that, an encouragement, but also kind of a model for for how to bring faith, intentional faith conversations into your home. So our hopeful model is, you know, we, we, we love this conversational style. We yeah. think so much more beautiful things come out of conversations between each other that we learn so much from each other. And and I've learned so much from different families I've had here at the parish this year and, and the families I've encountered and to be able to share them with you and to share them with the world to encourage as they encourage me and as they kind of inspire and, and challenge me every day as well. So crazy enough, we are going to actually be bringing families on, right, Whole Tim? families <laughs> with kids in the midst of all the crazy that that brings, yeah. Yes. So we are actually going to be bringing on real families every week. And um, this isn't something that uh, Father Tim and I have even watched videos or seen anyone else do. So this really is just um, a, a beautiful idea that was put on our hearts and that we are really listening to the Spirit as we move forward with it. We kind of have talked about some ways that you possibly could utilize this. And, you know, one way would be to listen to it as a podcast yourself, maybe, you know, um, sometime in your day. I talk to young moms now who are you know, doing pod, listening to podcasts as they wash dishes or do laundry or their kids take naps. And so maybe it's something that you can get a few moments and get some encouragement and some ideas about um, using some of the things we talk about with your family or to even possibly have a family meeting. And that um, I just think is such a rich idea is to be able to um, select a time and a space to sit um, and, and, and kind of claim every week. And I know at one time, maybe we thought that was the dinner table, but you know, who knows? I mean, a million things are going on. So wherever you can find that time and space, but that hopefully this idea of hearing other families talk about these things and will be able to get, you can listen to that as a family and be able to begin to model and continue these conversations in your home. And we will hope to provide a model for how to do that here, because sometimes that can be totally overwhelming. Yeah. And maybe we were never modeled what that looked <laughs> yeah. like in our own families. I know, sadly, in my own family, we never really had faith conversations like as a family. And I wish we did. Yeah. I wish I knew more about like what my mom and dad thought about faith. You know, yeah, oh yeah, we were we were faithful and going to mass with each other, and and we'd pray like around the dinner table and such, but. I wonder how much more rich, you know, my, or how different my life would be today if we had those kind of conversations. And so we want to encourage that and support that. And so we're going to be bringing a family in each week. And sometimes it'll be a, a family with young kids, teenage kids. Sometimes it'll be a, a, a grandparent couple. Sometimes it'll be a maybe a couple with no kids yet. So just a variety of people. We're going to bring in families in all sorts of different circumstances to kind of to have them share with us what faith looks like in the context of their home and to encourage us that it's possible. And that we can do this and and that we can support each other in doing that. And so what we'll do is we'll bring them in and uh, we'll introduce the family. And then and then we're going to be focusing on the scriptures, especially the gospel for the following Sunday and how that looks about having that conversation in our home. And our families will share with us their reflections. We'll share with them some of our reflections about that and how we think that the reflects on lives of families. And then we also want to in, invite our families that are here to share with us what it looks like in their home. In the real, you know, not in the kind of nice ideal picture that we put forward. But how did that look like sharing that? What did that look like getting together? And and what are some of the maybe their their thoughts about how it could help us getting together? And then we we'll encourage our families to share one tradition that that they find helpful in the context of keeping faith alive in the context of their homes. And then we know that this is a difficult task. And we know that that promise at baptism to raise our children in the faith is a totally overwhelming reality. It's just so much, you know, like I went to school for seven years. I have two master's degrees in theology, like, and I still don't know even like a, a little bit of it, you know, <laughs> and, and sometimes I think we can be so overwhelmed by our faith and not maybe having the answers to all that. And so one of the things we want to add as well is we're going to have this thing called Ask 
Father Tim, because we know it. that kids it. <laughs> ask like crazy questions sometimes. You know, sometimes I'm at our school here or with a family and, a, and our kid will come up to me after mass and the parent will say, you know what, this kid has a question for you. And I'm like, okay, great, great. You know, does, I think it was like, does God have a, have a mother? Someone asked me that one time, you know, it's a great question. And so we would love to support you in that. You don't have to have all the answers. But we know someone who does, and I don't have all the answers, but I, I promise you that I'll go out of my way to find an answer for your children and for you. And so we'll have a way to do that in our in our first podcast with the family. We'll introduce you into that. It's called Ask Father Tim. You can email us in questions, and I'll respond to them the best that I can, and uh, hopefully to encourage you in your way as well. And so the readings for this this Sunday coming up. Yes. We want to talk about those a little bit. Exactly. We want okay. to kind of model what it's going to look like a little bit here. Okay. So the reading for this, uh, the gospel for this upcoming Sunday comes from the gospel of Mark. And Jesus is in a conversation with the Pharisees. And they're kind of upset about his disciples not doing, you know, living up to, to the rule of the law, of, of especially in the cleansing rituals and things. And Jesus very smartly at the end re- responds to the Pharisees who are so concerned with like the external appearance. He says, he says, what's most important is what's in the heart. And he says, what's in our heart, it, it, it then reverberates into what's in our lives. And he says this kind of powerful line. He says, nothing that enters from the outside can defile the person. But it's the things that come from within that defile, you know? And I think we've seen the best and the worst in our families, huh? Yeah, and we've seen, and our families can bring out the best and the worst in us yeah, as well. Yeah. And out of our heart sometimes comes maybe some hurtful things and, and it can come anger and malice and all of these kind of things that kind of drive us apart. But I think that those things, you know, are rooted in there, but they also come from the influence on the outside, you know? Like what we hear, what we see, what we let in, what is forming us also, you know, what informs us also forms us in how we respond as well. And not just the bad, but also the good. Yeah. You know, and we have this opportunity, I think, in the context of our lives to bring good influences in. I know there are like so many different uh, avenues that content gets into our lives these days. It's in our pockets in these little yeah. devices called smartphones, yeah. on our TVs, and everywhere in, our, in the schools and all of these things. But, but we have to claim that, I think, as a family, saying like, we want to bring faith, the word of God, yeah. into our homes, through our hearts, and into our ears, into our hearts, so that so that maybe what is in our hearts can start to be transformed. And a piece know? of that, um, the reality, and it's hard sometimes for us to want to admit this as parents, but you know, a piece that makes it really difficult is the time piece, is yeah. just, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it, this our families are moving so, so, so quickly. And, you know, how do we... Um, make time to have these intentional conversations that really inform and form the young lives that we're raising. And so I think, you know, Tim was talking to me about this practice of um, actually making our home kind of a, a space that's sort of set apart, you know, and so he was talking about a practice of that he had heard about um, families taking their shoes off before they come inside, just kind of, you know, uh, marking that this that the world is going to stay outside and now we're going to enter this new space. And, and what are we going to bring into that, into this holy kind of sacred space? And I think it's very, very important for us um, to realize that we cannot count on and we don't want to count on the outside world to kind of form and raise, but that somehow there's this other classroom that we come into that um, we that that we are taking this time to in, intentionally have conversations and and to be forming and and also to be really to being examples to being examples to one another. The home is the school of value, yeah. and uh, we we may assume that values are being taught other places yeah. and, but the reality is that, that the parents have the, the loudest voice yeah. and they just have to claim that voice. And we want to help our parents yeah. claim the voice of, of being ones that their, their children want to listen to and, and want to have that conversation with, you know, if we start young in our families, we start young you know, with our children and have that practice of having conversations about faith, that'll continue throughout our lives, you know, and maybe we haven't started very young in that. And maybe we've waited a long time and, it's not too late to start no. today, you know, because the word of God can always change our circumstances. You know, the word of God is living and alive. It's effective and true, it says, you know, and it can come into our homes and into our lives and our hearts and start to transform us and, and, and conform our, our lives to the life of Jesus's. And, and when that starts to happen, the Holy Spirit goes crazy in our lives, you know, 
starts to light our homes on fire and we come like really places of love and in encouragement, I think, and transformation for our cultures, our neighborhoods, our homes, our neighborhoods, and then kind of reverberating out in, into the world. And and I think even as simple as um, just sharing our day, you know, I mean, how that practice too of just, you know, sharing um, and, and being able to teach through that, through the things that are happening every single day. And I mean, I, you know, used to have a practice, you know, in my home, you know, we would sit around the dinner table and talk about, um, you know, a rose and a thorn, one good thing mm. that happened today and one difficult thing that happened today. But I think that's getting so much harder for families to do because, you know, we, we're coming home so late, we're um, homeworks, you know, and then getting on computers and phones. And so it's just as simple as bringing goodness in by sharing our day. And and I also was reading something the other day and it was talking about um, trying to um, s- stop the habit of just talking for the majority of time about problems and trying more and more to talk about joys. Mm. And so I think in our homes too, a lot of times the conversations we are having are the tough ones in terms of discipline or, you know, grades or, you know, whatever the, the immediate things that we have to fix, but also to take the time to show our kids what's important to us and what matters and the virtues and the things that we see in them, the goodness that we see in them as well. Amen. And, and being a place that that's safe to do that. Yes encouraging a safe place i know for me like the biggest gift that i was ever given in the seminary is my best friend chris Mm -hmm. and we had a safe place like ever we had an intentional time actually we ended up meeting every wednesday evening we'd have a drink with each other and we just have a safe place to just talk and it wasn't like the only time that we were talking is when we had problems as friends you know but it became a place that uh, if problems were there they could be dealt with in a in a safe place in a place we were both ready to have a an honest conversation and we prepared for that each week and we were intentional about meeting about that each week. And, and I encourage my, my couples to do that, actually. The couples I do marriage prep for, I always encourage them, set a time each week. And no matter if it's good or whatever or bad, like you're there because you love each other and you want to have and you want to know each other and have that honest conversation with each other. And, and I hope that that would build like such a strong foundation, you know, such a strong foundation of, um, of love for each other yeah. and of, of encouragement and of, of, of um, proving to each other that, that you guys are worth it and we're going to fix this and we're going to get through it together. And and I also think another piece of, you know, is obviously bringing the goodness in. And then I think, you know, another piece that we have to always be looking at and it can be difficult, but is trying to manage the threat as well. And sometimes I, you know, tell families, I feel like I have to stand on, you know, the porch, the threshold of my home and kind of tell Satan, like, you're not going to get my kids, you know, but also really, um, you know, this idea in the gospel of what you bring in, but also what you keep out, Mm. what you keep out. And I know that's getting harder and harder by the TV and so many different influences that come in, but as parents managing, you know, and trying to really, you know, Um, not just talk about these values in this faith, but practice it by the things that we're doing inside our home and what we're not doing inside our home. And uh, we'll hope to give you as well, like the freedom of, of being honest about where you are too. Yeah. Yeah. I think the greatest gift that we can give each other. And I found even in my priesthood, like I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect because I'm a priest (laughs) far from it. You know, it's identified a lot of my uh, shortcomings, certainly, you know, but just identifying that, and even in my preaching, I, I'm not afraid to say that to the people, you know, saying like, here's where I struggle in this, you know, and to encourage you to share that with your children, like that's such, so important to be able just to say that, like, I don't, I don't know this, I don't understand it either, but let's, let's look at it again, or let's pray about it, or let's look into this. And, and there's that, that kind of permission, that permission to go deep like that, I think will have more lasting effects in our life than assuming that our, our faith is just about being perfect. And the Pharisees got that wrong in today's gospel, you know, is that external appearance. If we look like, okay, then yeah. we'll be okay. Yeah. I remember in my family, there's this a sign we have at our house. It says, remember, according to everyone else, we're just a normal family, you know, <laughs> like pick up the appearance, like look good, you know, look nice or yeah. clean up the house before yeah. people come over. But the reality is that we know that behind every door yeah. is a family that struggles sometimes. And you know. I don't think it's helping anybody to have it. You know, I think it's making us keep this these appearances up more Instagram, you oh, know, yeah. all the different 
uh, media influences where we can look at other families that look like they have it all together and we only, you know, see a very small piece of that picture, the one they wanted us to see, you know. And so, um, yes, the idea that um, we are real, I, I feel even when I'm talking about this, like there's, a, as we're doing this with you, I, I mean, there's a pieces that I'm going to be, I didn't do in my own home that I'm going to be trying to have my own kids adopt, you know, so um, yeah, the, the, the being honest and real and trying to, I hope the space is just a place where you don't feel like you have to have it Pinteresty perfect. Amen. It doesn't have to be, the, it doesn't have to be grammable, you know, <laughs> and to, to just be a place that's real yeah, a place that's honest and a place yeah. that, uh, that we can allow God's grace and mercy to come in and, and transform, you know, like he did at the wedding of Cana, taking the ordinary of the water you know, that he just filled up those jugs to the brim with. And, and when he encountered Jesus, it changed. Yeah. And I think he wants to do that. Like when we encounter Jesus in his word, in the sacraments, in each other, that the ordinariness of our everyday lives can start to be made into the sweetest of wine, like the, the most, the incredible wine, the wine that we probably need after a long day's work sometime, you know, but to allow that to become like a, a font out of our, our families, I think is such a, a beautiful opportunity we have and a beautiful invitation from the Lord. And, and to have this message be able to lead and guide us and i think sometimes you know living in a chaotic family life ever you know just to have a mission to have a, a purpose and a focus and in bringing our faith and in, in christ right into the midst of that allows us to kind of see what is important and what isn't important and so just by bringing that light in almost like a flashlight it just just makes things clear which is another thing i'd love to have you know, I just feel like our faith and Christ wants to come into your home. He's already there, but to help, um, to help you, to make it easier. This is not. Amen. That we yeah. have a, a holy family as an advocate, yes. you know, yes. that Jesus lived in a family and he yeah. knew the challenges yeah. of family life and he wants to definitely be there along with us. We're so excited for these next months and this is yeah. totally going to be led by the spirit. And if you have any <laughs> thoughts, let us know. We'd love to hear from you ways that we can better serve your families. Um, and as this unfolds, God will lead this. And he's so faithful yeah. in that because I know so much is hard for families. Like so much of what God wants is is for the family. And I think um, we wanted to make sure that we gave you a couple of our own personal traditions today because we're going to be asking families to share those. So we wanted to share um, something that we've actually been doing in our own homes. And um, do you want to begin, Tim? Sure, Yeah. <laughs> I've shared this before with my, my parishioners here at St. Bonaventure, but one of the, the, the traditions that we've started this year, again, is having family dinner with each other once a week. Every Thursday uh, is my day off, and I go home, and I, I go to the store, and I pick up delectable things, and I and I actually cook an entire meal from scratch. And it's become a, just a, a creative outlet for me, but also just like an outlet where I can show my appreciation and love for my family. And, and uh, I've made it a priority. And in making it a priority, my family's made it a priority as well. And so we get together every Thursday almost without fail. And, and we share a good meal with each other, have a good drink, and just enjoy each other's presence. And sometimes great conversations are there. And sometimes it's just we talk about what we've been doing, where we've been at. And uh, and that's a great conversation. And yeah. I um, can attest to this, okay, because I have been... Um, with Tim once at lunch um, where he had to cut it short because he had to go to Ralph's or yes, whatever. <laughs> I had to go shopping. <laughs> to go shopping. <laughs> and I remember um, that having, um, leaving an imprint on me too, you know, and just thinking, God, it's awesome that he does that, you know? And so the same thing, when we share these practices that we do, it also calls other people to to kind of think about, could I do that? Amen. Is that something that could work for me? Um, okay, my tradition, and it's something as you begin another school year, which happy new year. If you're a parent, happy new year, okay? Um, ready or not, huh? Yes, ready or not. If you're a parent, I feel like the, the, the new year starts the end of August, the beginning of September, and all the other slackers come in on January 1st, okay? <laughs> um, so I, um, I really wanted to start, every day with my kids with prayer. And I and every 
um, week, I would rethink how I could do this. You know what? I mean, just next week, next week, I'm going to cook this perfect breakfast and we're going to have, we're going to stand around the table. We're going to hold hands and we're going to begin the day and really, um, you know, allow and allow God to, to take this day. And, uh, and then it never fails. It was like 5 billion other things. And, you know, we're rushing out the door and then I'm throwing them out of the car. And then it would be like, oh my gosh, we didn't pray before we left today. And so I was like, gosh, how can I put this right in the midst of our, our day where it just seamlessly kind of falls? And so a practice that we adopt adopted each year was we had a prayer space on the way to school. Mm. So um, I each year I would let my two kids decide, you know, a place. Um, and I remember one year it was this donut shop because they were hoping I'd go there. Okay. Um, I remember <laughs> another year it was a certain tree, but um, they were able to adopt our prayer space, our prayer spot. And when we drove past there, we just automatically went the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. And then we began our day praying for our teachers and our friends. Mm. And um, and they we always had different needs that we, were, we would kind of talk about. And, you know, the first couple times, you know, it was like, okay, remember, remember. And then after that, it just, I mean, it was so automatic. And, and it was so, it was just such an easy, beautiful way to... Um, to know some of the things that were going on also with them that they wanted prayer for and to begin our day together. And I remember um, we one year had a carpool. <laughs> so they were like, okay, what's going to happen? You know, and I go, you know what? We're all going to pray. And it and I remember at the end awesome. of the year, one of the moms really thanking me for that, for including their her kids in that practice because um, she also was trying to make that happen. And sometimes it can be difficult. So I encourage you this year, find a spot um, on your way to school or, or, or just something that falls in the midst of your day, um, in the midst of your day before you drop your kids off and, um, and, and, and begin, begin their day with prayer, begin your day together. We'll be hearing the traditions of many of our families who are here and hopefully that you can have a tradition as well. And and to be able to come on and share that with us as well. And, and I always say, if you do it once, or if you do it maybe twice, it's a memory. But if you do it a few times, it becomes a tradition. And one thing about kids is once you start, <laughs> <laughs> they keep on it. So um, it's not that hard to begin. It's our prayer and our hope that your home becomes a place where faith and family meets. And it becomes such a strength for you. Uh, as as a family and for the strength for the people around you, because we're in a time of re revival, I think. Yeah. A time of renewal. Yeah. And we're so excited to be an encouragement for that and a support for that. And I also want um, all of you to know that Tim and I will, throughout the week, be covering you in prayer as well. Amen, yeah. And um, we will just really be committing to being prayer warriors. We already are but committing to be prayer warriors for every person, every family who um, is out there and listening to this podcast. So we so thank you for listening in today and, and hope that you'll continue to join us as we dive deep into the word of God and continue to invite Jesus, his Holy Spirit, and the entire divine family into our homes each and every day. We can hardly wait to continue to welcome you home.